Hey friends, back for another video and today I want to talk about speeding up your Final Cut Pro workflow with some keyboard shortcuts that I actually use in every single edit. So let's do this. Right, yeah, so editing a video takes ages can be a really time consuming thing. If you're doing regular videos, then obviously that time can mount up quite greatly. And one of the things that I found has speeded up my editing workflow enormously is just taking a little bit of time to learn a few keyboard shortcuts. Now, when you first start looking for keyboard shortcuts, you can go into the software, you can look at them, uh, you can watch lots of videos. There are so, so many different keyboard shortcuts. So uh, to try and make your life a little bit easier, today I'm just going to share with you a list of the keyboard shortcuts which I actually use. You know, I've spent loads of time trying to introduce new keyboard shortcuts into my workflow. Not all of them stick. These are the ones I actually use and that really make a big difference to me. Uh, I will also say I'm always learning and maybe I could even be using more, but it seems it's just the limit to what my brain can sort of hold at any one time. And as I start to learn and use a new keyboard shortcut, other ones just seem to disappear and I forget them but these ones have really stuck with me I use them on every single project uh, so let's dive into my screen and I'll see if I can not make this too long for you today okay so here I am in Final Cut uh, I've just opened up a project here let's just make sure my volume's not gonna yeah, over. Blow you away too much right okay so let's start really simply uh, spacebar to play or stop the project. Um, I know that's really simple, uh, but some people don't know and they're like using the play button all the time. Uh, so spacebar for play and stop. Uh, next um, is setting in and out points. So as you're sort of scrolling through your browser here, you can use the I and the O keys so if I'm scrubbing through this and I go, oh, that's the bit I want, I can say I and it will set an in point. I can scroll along and say O and that sets an out point. Um, so that is for in the browser, but it equally works in the timeline. If I'm coming along here, I can come in and set an I and an O as well and that will create a region for me. But my main use case for this is when I'm sort of starting to put a project together, um, I will go through my clips and I will say that bit to that bit um, and that's a real time saver. Uh, the next one is the Q, W and E keys uh, and I kind of use them in conjunction with the I and the O keys. So for example here, say I want this clip, um, I can use Q, W and E. So if I use the E key, what it will do is it will stick it right on the edge of the timeline. Doesn't matter where my uh, playhead was at the time when I press it, it will always put that clip on the end of the timeline. So that's the one I use most commonly when I'm creating a brand new project and I'm going through and totting things up. If I'm coming back to a project and I want to uh, add a new clip, say I want to add a clip here where my playhead is there, then um, I can come through my browser. I can say I want this bit to that bit using the I and the O. If I use uh, W, it will insert that clip where my playhead is, okay? And if I use Q, it will add it on top. So this is called a connected clip. Uh, so you can use either, but either way, it's always gonna do it where the playhead is. Okay, so those ones are really helpful, especially when you're first starting a new project. You can use that I, O and E to very quickly get the right clips on the timeline in the right order to begin with. So moving on from that, Command Plus and Command Minus are really helpful for zooming in or rather out in that case and zooming in. So that's Command Plus and Command Minus minus really good for just zooming around and what it does is it zooms to the playhead so if i put the playhead where i want to zoom in and see the detail then it will always zoom to the playhead really helpful so next up is still with the plus and the minus but this time it's control plus and minus and what that does is it adjusts the volume of the clip so if i do control plus 
and control minus, you can't actually see that very well, can you? So let me use the other shortcut, command plus. So you see this clip here I'm working on. If you keep your eye on that volume level and I do control plus and control minus, you can see that the volume is going up and down. So that is quite helpful, uh, particularly for music tracks and such. Uh, so moving on, uh, probably one of my most used uh, shortcuts of all time is Command B, which is the blade tool. And what that would do, well, it's not the blade tool. So B is the blade tool. So I can click B and it will bring the blade head up like this. And then I can scroll along and say I want to cut there and I want to cut there. I never really use that though. I never find that particularly helpful. Uh, what I tend to use is Command B and I use the playhead. So if I'm scrubbing along here and I say I want to cut there, I say Command B, it puts a cut there, scroll along, Command B, scroll along, Command B. And that is how um, I tend to use it. So Command B, it's like my favorite, it's my favorite shortcut. Oh, my nerd. So moving on, um, I've talked in other videos about using markers, particularly when trying to cut to music, uh, but they're really helpful and I use the M key to add a marker. So as I'm scrubbing through, there's a few ways I use markers. I use them to um, mark like the beats of a song. If I'm cutting to music, they can be really helpful. I also use them like, you know that old thing where people used to tie a bit of string around their fingers so they'd remember something. If I'm going through an edit to review it, I'll use the M key just to mark like, oh, I didn't like that. I need to do something there. And you can get really specific with it if you want. You can give them names or add comments and stuff like that. Um, but I just tend to throw them on there by using the M key, and that's enough normally. Um, and you can, you know, whatever clip is active, it will add it to. So you can see one there on the adjustment layer, one here on the music, and one here on the actual footage. So whichever clip you're active on, you can press M and it will add a marker like so. Okay, so that is markers. Um, okay, a really mundane one here, but I'm gonna mention it anyway, just because some people don't know. You can do Command C on a clip like so, and then you can do Command V and it will paste it where the playhead is. Um, but what you might not know is you can use Command Shift V which is paste with attributes, which is a really awesome uh, way of doing things. So for example, this adjustment layer here has got all of my color correction on it. So I can command shift that and copy it. And then say I, for some reason, wanted to add another adjustment layer over here. I don't know why I would do that, but you know, bear with me here. So then I want that adjustment layer to be the same. I can do Command Shift V. And what it will do is it will bring up this window here where I can then choose what I want to copy across. And in this case, I would maybe just want to copy everything. And I can say Paste. And it's not copied the actual clip. It's copied all of the attributes from the clip. So that could be Transform, Color Correction, um, Effects, everything everything at all and you can choose it might be audio adjustments you, you get the picture anyway so that is paste with attributes next up we've got uh, transform so say I wanted to uh, zoom in on my face for example uh, what a lot of people would do is click this here to open the transform and then they might zoom out and grab the corner like so to do that Command Z to undo, another one for you there just in case. Um, so instead of doing that, what you can actually do is you can do Shift T, which opens the transform window, and that's just a little bit quicker. Done, zoomed in on the face. So moving on then from uh, transform, um, I wanna talk about speed ramping, uh, which is one that I use uh, quite regularly. So for example, say I've got this clip here and I want to adjust the speed of it, but I want it to be normal speed and then, to, and then speed up. So I can use Shift B for that. So if I do that here, Shift B, what it does is it brings up the speed kind of section, as I call it, and it's put a break where I uh, have had the playhead when I hit shift B and what that then means is I can um, 
use this drop down here and I could set this clip to be like slow or fast and what it will do is it will adjust that speed. So shift B will open the timing settings and put a cut for speed. So I've not actually cut the clip, I've only cut the section of it that I want from a speed. So I'm changing the speed of the clip. I hope that makes sense. Uh, what else do I use? I've got my little list here so I can check. Uh, control T is a really helpful shortcut. So if I do Control T, what that does is it adds a basic text element. There you go. Simple as that. Saves you opening this and going to titles and then browsing to the one that you want. Uh, you can literally just go Control T and there it is. Next up, really good for editing any long text segments if you've done an interview maybe or a talking head interview or maybe like me you ramble on in your videos uh, then what you can do is you can use J and L which are like shuttle keys so say I'm reviewing this um, now I, I can hit uh, L and I'm talking quickly if I hit J then it starts going backwards and you can hit K which takes you back to normal speed but I never really use K because if I'm going through if I hit L and I'm going through quickly like that and I notice something I can just hit space and then it stops it and because I've stopped it when I then press play it goes back to the normal speed. So that's fine. So that's J and L, the shuttle keys to go forwards fast or backwards slowly. Uh, I've only got a couple more for you. So hang in there. I know this is a lot to take in. Um, a really helpful one for um, when you want to just get back to the beginning of your footage. You can use FN and the left arrow just takes you straight back to the beginning of your timeline. I find that quite helpful if you you know, just want to go back to the beginning to review the whole project that you're working on. I find that to be super helpful. And I've got one more for you, and that is trimming clips. So if I decided that this clip, I wanted it to end where my playhead is, let me just turn this transform off for a second. Okay, if I decided I wanted that to end there, what I've seen a lot of people do is use these arrows here and sort of drag like that. Or I've seen people use the B, go in the blade tool and cut it like that and then delete that. That's all unnecessary because what you can do is you can just use the Alt or Option key as it's more commonly known these days and the square brackets so if I use the right square bracket what it will do is it will cut everything after the playhead like so uh, which is really helpful um, and if I do alt open bracket it cuts everything before the playhead so you can trim the beginning or end of the clip so I find that super helpful. Uh, the good thing about that as well is say like I've got these three clips here stacked up. If I select all of them and put my playhead over there like so and then I do uh, option square bracket it will actually trim all of them together which is nice. In the past I've spent ages trying to line cuts up and then I found that and it was just brilliant. So that is it. They are the shortcuts which I actually use. There are many, many more shortcuts. There may be some that are even more appropriate to your specific workflow, which I just don't use or don't need. Um, I'm always on the lookout for more though, and I'm always adding to the list. But these are the ones which I use all of the time for every single project. So that's it for today. I hope you found that helpful. If there's any shortcuts that you can't live without, then please let me know in the comments below. As I said, I would love to hear and learn them myself. And other than that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Whoosh.